Hi, I'm Lisa Genza at Freedom Kitchen, and we're here today with Kids in the Kitchen. This class is one of the classes that we offer through Oxford Virtual Academy and Oxford Fusion. It's one of our more popular classes. We're going to teach the kids today how to make vegan tacos and something that they can do all on their own. Especially important for all of the kids going off to college who need to learn how to cook and cook something simple in their dorm room. So join us today while we make smashed chickpea tacos. So we're going to start. I know I've brought up the two different can openers before because depending on where you are there might be different can openers. So pick one that you need to practice with and let's start with the tomato paste. And we'll start over here. This is for the water. So, Brianne, we're going to need um, one cup of water. So, you're going to go ahead and add that to our mixing bowl. And there's your spatula. So Mexican is my favorite food. Do you guys like Mexican food? Um, yeah. Hmm? I mean, my friend's mom is Mexican. She makes Mexican food a lot. And I like that, but don't like when my dad makes it. <laughs> yeah, not when your dad makes it. Is it too spicy? Mm, but you don't eat it. You don't eat it. <laughs> well, then you can learn how to get in the kitchen and make something different, right? So if you don't like it. So we're going to try today um, organic blue corn. And we're also going to try grain-free taco shells. And we're going to make a vegan taco. That's why that this one is sometimes better. Yeah, for not getting that, that strip of paper. Um, so this is tacos without meat. And I know sometimes it's hard to conceptualize when we're used to eating something a certain way. How do we make it different? And in this class, I, I always stress options and different ways of making things. We kind of get stuck in a rut. We do things the same way we've always done them. Perfect. Here's a spoon for you. And Brianne's going to add one cup of water. Want to pass that down. And then someone can add our taco seasonings. Yeah. Okay, add the taco seasonings, Addison, and mix it up. Yep, we're going to use the whole packet. You're going to mix it up and then start to cook it here on this burner. Go ahead and mix it. Now these three things are pantry staples. Chickpeas, tomato paste, and taco seasoning. Let's just see if there's a little bit more in there. Okay, go ahead and put that in the pan. <laughs> After I get the paper out of the pan. You can move it closer. And the spatula is here if you need it. So if you lost power and you couldn't cook something, when we go to the pantry, we want to have things that are already pre-cooked or that we can eat right out of the can. We can actually eat chickpeas right out of the can. Same with your tomatoes, all of your canned tomatoes. So do you see that even if we lost power or there was some type of an emergency, if you kept those three things in your pantry, you could make this you're going to see how easy it is. Actually, if you want to keep stirring that for me and I'll get this out of your way. Okay, Samantha, we need two scoops, two full scoops, so it's four cups total of chickpeas in here.
Nope, in here. Yep, right in here. <laughs> it's okay. A few chickpeas never hurt anybody. So chickpeas are a great source of protein. They also have fiber and they have um, starch. So we get carbohydrates and protein from our beans. Some call it a more complete source of protein, but chickpeas, navy beans, um, kidney beans, cannellini beans, they're all good for us. And these are great things to keep in the pantry because no matter what happens, you would have something that you could eat. So chickpeas or garbanzo beans and tomato paste. And then we just added taco seasoning. Let's talk for a minute about taco seasoning. So the brand that you find in the grocery store is typically full of chemicals and additives very similar to food coloring and dyes. Remember we had that conversation a couple weeks ago. We talked about red number seven and blue number 11. We said food doesn't have a number, that's a chemical. Well, let's talk about the chemicals that we find in packets of seasonings. We find MSG, which is monosodium glutamate, which is a chemical. And what it does when they do brain scans, they see that it lights up the portion of your brain that drugs would light up. So MSG is actually very addictive. And when we have MSG in our food, we tend to eat more which could be why the food manufacturers use it. It makes our food taste better, but what it does is it makes you crave more food. MSG goes by about 30 or 40 different names. So you'll find it under modified cornstarch, modified food starch. Um, it might be called um, um, something yeast, uh, yeast extract. It goes by a bunch of different names. When you look at a packet of taco seasoning, you're gonna see all those things. You're gonna see MSG, you're going to see trans fat, partially hydrogenated oils, and you're gonna see at the very bottom, when you look at like Old El Paso or one of those, it will say includes bio-engineered ingredients. Does anyone know what that is? Bioengineered ingredients are ingredients that are made by man. They've been engineered or changed and they are not the same as from nature, which is also the same thing as GMO or genetically modified. So if we were to try to make BRCA flour and we were to crossbreed broccoli and cauliflower, that is called hybridization. So if you were to take an agriculture class, they can crossbreed different plants. But genetically modified organisms are actually different. Genetically modified organisms have glyphosate or Roundup right in the seed. So they've changed the seeds so that they could put a patent on them. And they changed them so that they don't grow back every year. So they have, there's a lot of chemicals and manipulation that they did with genetically modified seeds. There's a termination gene in a genetically modified seed and they also included glyphosate right in the seed. So would any of you make dinner tonight and then go out to the garage and get Roundup and spray it on your plate? But that's what they put in your GMO seeds. The same thing that we use to kill weeds around the house is inside the seeds of all of your genetically modified ingredients. So if they used GMO seeds, GMO corn to make your taco seasoning, then there's Roundup in there. So that would be like making your own spice blend, like we did last week for our 10 spice soup. Making your own spice blend, spraying it with glyphosate or Roundup, putting it in the cupboard, and then every time you cook, using that and putting glyphosate in your food. So we wanna make sure when you hear me talk about clean ingredients, we want to use things that are clean. We don't want MSG, we don't want trans fat, we don't want GMOs, and we don't want high fructose corn syrup. 
So Simply Organic is one brand by Frontier Co-op. You can get it at Whole Foods or Epicure, which is also a clean brand. But we don't want to buy the other stuff, which I don't even want to give them credit by saying their name because they're putting yucky ingredients in there. Okay, Edison, take the potato masher and smash them all. So I'm just, I just continue to turn the heat down so they don't dry out, that's all I'm doing over here. So these are called smashed chickpea tacos. That's all we're doing now is we're just smashing them. Now who has like a nacho, a nacho cheese dip, um, like a little crock pot that they use for parties and um, you plug it in. We do, sometimes we do fondant, we have the cheese dip and stuff and at the end for dessert we can put chocolate. Yeah. Do you have the one that plugs in? Yeah. So do you see that you could just plug that in and you could put your chickpeas, your tomato paste, and your taco seasoning in that. Mix it and smash it just before you serve it. And really, if you were to lose power, if you didn't, you could literally mix this up and just eat it as is. All right, mix it back up again. I'm gonna find the lid, because we washed it. All right, we're going to cover that and we're just going to leave this here on low. And now we're going to put our taco shells into the oven and then we're going to go cut all of our toppings. So we have two different kinds of taco shells today. So over at this counter, we don't have to wear gloves because it's going into the oven or because we're cooking it. When we get to that counter, we'll have to wear our gloves because we're cutting our vegetables today just to go over the health department rules. Okay, so Ella, go ahead. We're gonna take half the tray will be blue tacos and actually with such a small group, with such a small group, we probably only need half of those. So six, we'll do six of those and six of these. Okay. And that way everyone will have one and we'll have an extra just in case. Okay, so organic blue corn. I like, um, yep. Whenever we're buying corn, we can't guarantee anymore that the corn has not been genetically modified. Um, but I do like the blue corn. I think that it's less likely to be genetically modified. And then this one is no corn at all. This is a grain-free taco shell, and it is made with cassava root. So I brought the boxes so you could look at them since you guys are old enough to start doing your own shopping here soon. Oh, do you want to turn it? Yeah. Sorry, I, I was holding on to it. Okay, this is Greek yogurt, and this Greek yogurt is made with almond milk. You can, mm hmm Okay, we put half of it into the small bowl. Samantha and I have an open packet of taco seasoning, and in the bowl, we'll add a little bit of taco seasoning to about half of, yeah, put about half of our Greek yogurt. So now in place of using sour cream on your tacos, you'll get more protein and you'll get beneficial bacteria by using Greek yogurt. This one is almond milk Greek yogurt because I want you to try something that's dairy-free so you know you have dairy-free options. 
And then I'm going to show you that just by mixing in a little bit of the taco seasoning, yep, just pour some in there. You can just sort of eyeball it and see. And then you're going to mix it up. It's going to be like a dip. So it'll have taco seasoning mixed with your Greek yogurt, yogurt, if I can say it. And you can put that on top of your tacos. So that'll be part of our toppings today. Then I also have for us to try, which you guys are gonna learn how to make this in week 14. Uh, this is cashew queso. It's nacho cheese made out of cashews. So we're gonna have that today too, to put on our tacos. See, that looks awesome. All right, so we'll leave these here because we're gonna end up making a taco bar. And then we are going to move to the other counter and we're gonna cut our vegetables. So we'll all need gloves to cut our vegetables. Welcome back. Now we're gonna cut our vegetables for our tacos. All right, what do you guys normally put on your tacos? Um, sour cream. Yeah. Tomatoes, avocado, and cheese. Oh, and lettuce. What about cilantro? Okay. Yes, cilantro. Okay. What about purple cabbage? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't know. My dad makes the tacos. I mean, I think there's mm -hmm. cabbage in them. Okay, and then we have an avocado for somebody to do too. So, okay. You're gonna cut up the peppers and you can mix them together. Um, you can cut them into small dices. Natalie, you have our tomatoes. Okay, Samantha, we're gonna make sure that we cut our cabbage into small shreds. Yeah, I would dice it, yep. Um, so when we're doing our cabbage, we really just want small pieces. It's going to add some bright color. Believe it or not, cabbage, raw, same thing with the green cabbage, small shreds. And then we've got lettuce over here. Does that look small enough? Yep. Perfect. And I wanted us to have a couple different colors. So you can do half that half of the orange one and do half of the red one. Probably just want to cut the bottom half of the red one and just leave all the seeds in the top. Okay. Do we put the on the yep. Pick a bowl. And then we'll make guacamole in one of these two. So we'll need somebody to do the avocado. I love guacamole. So raw cabbage really doesn't have a lot of flavor. It has more flavor when it's cooked. This is a great way to add more veggies to our taco without taking away from the taco flavoring. So I love for you guys to make all of your food very colorful and add as many vegetables as you can. Yep, put that in here. We always have choices in lettuce. There's lots of different kinds of lettuce. So we've all heard of iceberg lettuce and then romaine lettuce, mm -hmm. but there's many different kinds of lettuce. There's bib lettuce, um, so that's what I bought there. We have um, every kind of vegetable, you know, has different nutrients and that holds true with all the different lettuces. So don't limit yourself when you're buying lettuce at the store, you're buying greens. You can also always cut up um, very small collard greens or kale those have more protein in them actually so they're really good for you and you can add those to tacos or to salads as well now in Italian households what about dandelions mm -hmm. do you guys do dandelion salads mm -hmm. dandelions are really good for you dandelions are good for your liver so aren't dandelions the yellow ones yeah but the yes Aren't dandelions like yellow and white? Or are those well, 
you can eat the flour, but you, but there's a certain period of time you should eat the flour. But the greens themselves are really good for you. So dandelion greens are fantastic for your liver. So that's another thing you could try at the grocery store. They have them at Kroger's and Meyers in the um, in the vegetable section. You can try dandelions. The primary purpose of your liver is to detoxify, and dandelions help support your liver. Every food has different benefits for us. That's why we don't want to get stuck in a rut. We want to try different foods so we get different nutrients. Easier than the elementary class. I have to watch them with the knives. Okay, I'll get you another bowl. Actually, we, that's probably all the cabbage we need. So do you want to do our avocado? And we'll have Samantha do all the cilantro. Okay, do you know how to do the avocado? Okay, we're gonna cut the avocado, see where the stem goes? We're gonna cut it in half and then turn it and go all the way around. So you're gonna cut it in the center all the way around in a circle. It doesn't matter, you'll cut right through it because the outside is staying up. Pierce it first with the knife, yep. Now go around, turn it as you go. Yep, set it down. Um, yep, so you don't cut your hand. Perfect. Once you, you're all the way around, twist it. That's all you do. Now to get that pit, I'll demonstrate and then you do it. Sometimes you can just go around to make sure it's loose, but it feels pretty loose. So go around. Okay, we, and then we rock this back and forth. And that's how it comes out. Go ahead and hit the, hit the pit so you know. Yep. And then that's exactly, you just rock that pit until it pops out. Now we take a spoon, let me grab a spoon for you. With a spoon, you could scoop out the avocado. We're gonna put it in here and add our guacamole seasoning. Okay. And give this to Diana. Okay. So when we're doing our herbs, the leaves are going to be best the stems are too hard. So we can chop small here. Some people actually take the leaves off like this. And then you'll just wanna chop that. And you have to really slice. Because it won't chop, you'll have to slice to make small pieces of cilantro. So how do I cut this? Cut that in half. Like this? Yep. Pierce it with the knife. Oh. It's easier to pierce and then cut. Yep. Yep, cut the bottom half off. And what you're going to see is see all the seeds are up in the top? Yeah. Now, if you wanted to do this half, what I do is I go around and cut that. Just go right around the stem. Careful. You always want to watch when you're pulling the knife towards you, because if it gives, it could. Yep. Perfect. I think that's the easiest way to cut it. Do you want me to just cut this one? You can just cut half. This is a small class. I don't know if we need the whole thing. Hard to do with the gloves on. <laughs> We probably don't need it. So we'll, we don't need the second tomato. Oh, this is beautiful. See all these colors, orange and red and purple and green. It's a colorful salad. Yes. Okay, mix that up, Addison. Do you want a fork instead of a spoon? Thank you. 
All right, when we're done cutting, then we're going to line everything up and, and prepare for our taco bar. We'll go ahead and put our taco shells in the oven for just a few minutes. You, you can cut it. I knew this was going to be a simple recipe today, so we have a little bit of time. But this is an important recipe. This is teaching you a protein alternative so that we can talk about um, different ways of making a, a favorite food, right? Tacos are a favorite food, a comfort food, but this would be an easier way to make them. And if we ever ended up in quarantine again, you could make them out of uh, chickpeas from your pantry. Let's hope we never end up Let's hope we never do, Ella. I agree. And I want to make sure that you guys are prepared, no matter what happens in the future, that you know how to stock a pantry, how to make food from your pantry, and it will also help you when you go off to college. Who makes guacamole at home? I love guacamole. You don't make guacamole at home? No? Okay, you get to try it today. I love guacamole. Okay, so Ella's finishing the peppers. I'm gonna put the taco shells in and then we are going to move everything to this counter to make our taco bar. So if you guys wanna bring over what you cut and we're gonna add that over here with our Greek yogurt and our cashew queso. Welcome back. Today we're going to be making our tacos. Okay guys, it looks like our taco shells are ready. So today we used two different kinds of taco shells. We have organic blue corn and we have grain free. Grain free means that there's no corn, no rice. It's actually made, they're made from cassava root, from a root vegetable. So we're gonna now put it all together. This one will be hot. So these are our chickpeas that we made with only three ingredients. Okay, so I'm gonna get you bowls and you guys are gonna take one of each of the taco shells because I want you to try them all. Add your chickpea meat and then dress it with everything from our taco bar. So make sure that you take a little bit of, try the Greek yogurt, try the Greek yogurt that we mixed taco seasonings in, and try the cashew queso. Because only by trying things will we know if we like it or not. Thanks for joining us today at Freedom Kitchen. It truly is an honor and a pleasure to teach kids the joy of cooking. So in our culinary expressions class, we focus on courage, confidence and creativity. It takes courage to get in the kitchen and try new things. We build confidence through repetition and after we have that confidence and that courage then we can become creative. Cooking is something or eating is something we have to do every day so learning to cook is truly a life skill and it's an honor to be able to do that with the kids. They warm my heart and I love teaching this program. Thanks for joining us.